but everyone standing that's not family please Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he was dead yet shall he live seated. At this time we will have an opening selection by Jasmine Frazier. Let us say amen for her she comes.
again. The Bible says, let us not hope as one who had, uh, let us not sorrow as one who have no hope. But there is hope beyond the grave. If you live right, you can die right. Come on, somebody, tell the Lord thank you. Amen. We got to praise God in spite of. Our amen. Even during these difficult situations. This time we're going to have our scripture reading, our Old Testament by Evangelist Corinda Thomas, followed by our New Testament by Minister Maria Fournay, and the prayer of comfort by Elder Myra Perkins in their order, please. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 From Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, and even from evermore. I have read Psalms 121. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Come on now, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you and you. Ain't nobody in here dead but our Aunt Dickie. We are alive and well in this house. So we ought to act like we're alive and well in this house. Because God woke you up this morning. And he started you on your way. So we owe God a praise. I will be reading 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, which shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or it be bad. The word of God for the people of God. Come on and give God glory in this house. Come on now. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads at this time. Father, we come to you this day. we asking you, uh, first we want to thank you for everything that you've done. We want to thank you for what you've done from our birth up until this point. Yeah. Now, God, we've come to a moment here where the chain of the Price family has been broken again. But, God, we know that you're able to put this chain back together. God, we ask you to bless this family, Lord. Bless my family, Lord. I ask you to hold their hearts in your hand, O oh God. Even on today, Lord, soothe, O oh God, 
And in the name of Jesus, let your power and your presence and your love abide among us the more, O oh God. Lord, we love you today. There's nothing today that we can say to bring our Aunt Dickie back. But God, we know that your love still is what's going to keep us together. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We dare not question you because you are the God of everything. And today, Lord, we want you to give us your strength. We need your strength today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you right now. And we give you praise in Jesus' name for the celebration of our Aunt Dickie. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, Lord, even on today as her daughter and granddaughter and everybody goes back to the house. But God, when the phone stops ringing, oh God, and when people stop coming and people stop knocking. But, oh God, we ask you, Lord, when she's in the house or they're in the house by themselves, Lord. And a well or a spring of water comes over them and she says, I want to talk to mom. God, you be right there and you say, I'm your mama today. You talk to me. I'm here for you. I can fix it for you. I can do it for you. I can heal it for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, when family is not there, God, you let everybody know. You let her know that you're going to be there, Lord. Sit beside her on the sofa. Sit beside her on the bed at night, Lord. Wrap your arms around her. Talk to her like I'm talking to you. Let your voice be so clear to her, God. And then let her know that you are there and that everything going to be all right. And we give you praise, Lord, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Say amen for her as she comes.
go get it. I can see her right now as we all gather together. And we go back to her house and she's got a pot of collard greens on the stove. <laughs> some good old biscuits, some cornbread, and a whole bunch of other stuff. She was the go-to aunt. To me, she was Queen Bee. I always called her the Queen Bee. Because we could always go to her for anything. And she would be there for us. She always had a beautiful smile on her face. She always had a lot of love in her heart. She would tell you off now when you needed it. But she loved She said, I love you anyway, but I'm going to tell you like it is. But I'm just here today to just say that I'm going to be going to miss her. We are truly going to miss this woman that's laid up here today. Because she was, she was just special. She was special to all of us. She loved God first and foremost. And she loved her family. So as I stand here today, I just say thank God for the time that we had to spend with her while she was yet alive. She's no longer here, but she's always going to be in our hearts because, as I said, she was always special. And to me, she was more than an aunt. She was a friend. She was my mother. She was my sister. She was one that kept me in line. She was one who helped me through times when no one else could besides Jesus. And I am truly going to miss her. She used to always tell me, she said, you think you're my mama, don't you? But that's the relationship that we have with one another. And as for you, Dacia, Nessa, and Deandra, she told me to tell you that when this day comes, it was a joy to her to raise you girls up because she loved you so dearly. So remember that in your hearts, that your mother loved you. Your grandmother loved you. There was nothing that she wouldn't do for you. So I want to end now because I Acknowledgement. The family expresses sincere appreciation for the comfort, the prayers, the concerns, support, and awesome acts of love that we have received during our time of bereavement. A special thanks to community, home care, and hospice Sharon McKay and Nathaniel Shaw, Jr for the care shown to our Dickie. We thank you dearly and pray God's blessings upon you and that God will restore you that which you have poured out so freely <clears throat> unto our loved one. There were many cars. Some have been selected to share with you today. This brings a prayer that God above will comfort you with his great love and may the strength of your belief help guide you through this time of grief. With deepest sympathy, Pastor Reverend Dr. Russell Schultz, Sr., 
First Lady or Leading Lady, Reverend Gwendolyn Shaw. We hope you feel comforted just knowing that we are thinking of you. So sorry for your loss, Mayor Joyce Richard Brown and the Williamson Board of Commissioners. Let yourself have the permission and time for whatever you need to do. Meanwhile, please know many warm, caring thoughts are sent with compassion to you. May God bless Mayor Richard Brown and Deacon Edwin Brown. To Minister Fournay, sorrow touches the heart in such a personal way. <coughs> But we hope you know you are not alone. Our caring thoughts are with you now and in the days to come. With deepest sympathy, the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church, Moonlight Circle Choir Ministry, and the CBC Gospel Ensemble. To Anissa, Deandra, and Dacia, we are here for you. Trust and believe. We feel and know your pain. We know and feel your hurt, but God will help you through it. He will give you the strength in the days ahead. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We love you and we are here for you. Maria, Jazz, and Jalissa. May you find peace and strength as you honor her life and her love. To Anissa, from April and the Williams family. Pray for God to bring you the kind of peace only He can provide in sympathy to Griffin and Everett family. Your loved one will always be remembered as a special blessing with sympathy from Goss and Clemens. Paper. From the St. James Baptist Church, Dr. Jerome Lee, Jr., 536 West Florida Street, Greensboro, North Carolina, August the 19th, 2020, the family of Miss Mary Cooper. Grace and peace unto you. It is with sincere sympathy that I greet you at this time of sorrow. However, please know that I'm praying with and for you. Miss Mary Cooper will truly be missed. For Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. We, the St. James Baptist Church family, do mourn with our church member, Deaconess Michelle Kett, for the loss of her aunt. May the grace of our Lord and God continue to keep to keep and comfort you, strengthen you at this time. Pastor Jerome Lee Jr. and the St. James family. <clears throat> Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church, Church Resolution. We the pastor, leading lady, officers and members of the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church do bow in humble submission to the will of God. In June, a year ago, we mourned with you the passing of Sister Karen Price. Today, again, we realize the pain that your heart has to endure with the dem demise of Sister Mary Elizabeth Dickey Christ Cooper. Where Mary joined Cornerstone many years ago as an adult, we all knew that she loved her church and pastor because she did whatever she could to support the endeavors of her church. Furthermore, she has in the past worked diligently in the church dining hall to please others with her cooking. As she continued to attend, we could see her love and growth in her Christian faith.
to Deacon Jimmy Price, Minister Maria Fournay, and the entire Price family. It is our prayer that God's love reach out to you and take you by the hand. That grace and mercy be your assurance and the rock on which you stand. Your faith in God will strengthen you and keep you during your grief. So cast all of your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Humbly submitted this the 20th day of August, Pastor Reverend Dr. Russell Shaw, Senior Leading Lady Reverend Brenda Lynn Shaw, Deacons, Deaconess, Trustees, and members of the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church. The Obituary. A Celebration of Life for Mrs. Mary Price Cooper. Mary Elizabeth Cooper was born April 6, 1947 in Williamston, North Carolina to the late Hezekiah and Enola Price. Her family resided in Martin County where she spent her adult years. She was ed educated in the Martin County school system. Dickie, as she was affectionately called by family and friends, attended St. Joseph Church of Christ in Hamilton as a child. As an adult, she joined Cornerstone Baptist Church, where she served on the kitchen committee, where she fit right in because cooking good food was her passion. She served on this committee until her health began to decline. She would often visit the sick in the neighborhood and deliver them hot meals. She met and married Melvin Cooper on October the 30th, 1968, and became a loving housewife, raising their two daughters, Kalandra Cooper and Anissa Cooper. Dickie became the matriarch of the family, and rightly so, because she helped raise her nieces and nephews. She was the aunt that they knew could cook, so they often gathered at her house for family dinners. Her family will truly miss her and her Sunday dinners. Mary Cooper transitioned from this life to her heavenly home on Friday, August 14, 2020. Dickie was preceded in death by her parents, Hezekiah and Enola, her husband, Melvin Cooper, daughter, Kalandra Cooper, siblings, Albert Price, Robert Price, Michael Price, Sandra Purvis, and Carrie Price. She leaves to cherish her memories one daughter, Anissa Cooper, JT of Zebulon, North Carolina. Two granddaughters, Dacia Ellison of Williamston and Deandra Ellison of Rocky Mount. Two great grandchildren, Stone and Jay. One brother, Jimmy Price, Cecilia. Two sisters, Dorothy Goddard, Henry, and Barbara Ann Thomas, three sisters in law, Ollie Price Flood, Virginia Price, and Carolyn Strayhorn, maternal daughter, Michelle Keck, special niece, Clorinda Thomas, and a host of nephews, nieces, cousins, and close friends. God bless you, Ma, for the love you've given, for the prayers you prayed, for the words of wisdom, for the memories made. You are loved and appreciated for so many reasons on today and always. You taught this family to appreciate all the blessings God has given us, and the very best of those blessings is you. And this comes from, with love, Anissa, Deandra, and Dacia. 
the broken chain. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again the family. Church, say amen. amen. Come on, let us say amen again. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a solo by missionary Tia Sutton. Say amen for her if she comes.
Come on, somebody out and raise your hand and tell him. sits on high created the heavens and the earth and even if we were to look at ourselves and see that we are fearfully and marvelously made had been by nothing amen but by the hand of God and every one of us in here 
We are a designer's original. Amen. You look around in this room, even if you're twins, there's nobody in here that look exactly like you. There's nobody in here that have your exact DNA, amen. Nobody in here have your fingerprints. Yeah. Amen. amen. They don't tell you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there is a true and living God. Yeah. We're grateful to the Lord God is greatly, greatly to be praised. Amen. Again, we do honor our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ who is the head of our lives, amen, to all of you who are friends and visitors, and last but not least to this family, amen, we say to you, Nissa, amen, uh, DeAndre, Deja, amen, all of the family, amen, you've lost a great woman of God. But maybe may I say to you, amen, and you don't, you don't have to be a preacher to be a woman of God. All of us are God's children. Whether, whether you want to think so or not, Amen, amen. We might not act like his children, but we are the creation of God's hand, amen. You didn't get here by accident. God's DNA is on you and it's on me. But we want to say amen to the family. We bring you our sincere condolence, amen, and our sympathy, amen, in that we feel what you're going through and our empathy in that we understand one of the most difficult tasks for the pastor, amen, it's a preacher funeral, amen, a member or not, amen. And I don't know why it is we spend so much time trying to live and so little time making preparation to die. Doesn't matter how good you look, what kind of car you drive, how much money you have in the bank, you brought and I brought nothing into this world and it's certain you're not going to take anything with you. You look now at this pandemic, amen, and we are in restrictions, almost like we are on lockdown. And people everywhere are asking, where is God in the midst of all of this? That, that term is called theodicy. That is, God is a good God. Why does, he, uh, why does he allow good and evil? Well, when sin came into the world, disease came along with sin. When you began to read your Bible, many times it talks about pestilence. And we're living in the last of the last day. Yes. I don't know what it's going to take for America to wake up. Oh Amen. But through it all, I still believe that we're going to have a great revival. Yes. And people that don't know the Lord, amen, they are going to come to know him. Yes. Out of all the things that I might say, amen, and it's not going to take me long, I want to say to you unequivocally, to everybody that's in this building, if you're in this building and you're not saved, and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're doing yourself a misjustice. I'm at an age now, amen, where I'm, I'm not trying to buy friends, I'm not trying to please pre people. I have to preach this gospel. There is a heaven and a hell. Amen. And when we go through this low ground of sorrow, it ought to be a conditioning of the mind, amen, when we see certain events. It ought to alert us, amen, that the alarm is being sounded. The road is being called, amen. And we are still procrastinating. The Bible said that the harvest is spent, the summer is past, and we are not saved. Let me, let me go swiftly to the word of the Lord. Let me draw your attention to God's word out of Old Testament scripture. Psalms 90. Psalms written by... Moses allow me to use the multi-text. And all that simply means, amen, I'm going to read more than one verse. And that is because we can lift a verse out of context and, in, and end up with a pretext and miss the understanding of what God is really trying to say. Uh, Moses right here, he is a man of God. He prays for the knowledge and sensible experience of God's divine providence. All of us need to be led by the Spirit of the Lord. I don't know about you, I do, because I've made so many mistakes. But God is the one who will look beyond all of my faults and see my needs. He writes, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Uh, before the mountains were brought forth, the ever has formed the earth and uh, the work even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, return ye children of men. 
For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as sleep in the morning. They are like grass which goeth up in the morning that flourish and goeth up and in the evening it is cut down and withered. it. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquity before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three scores, three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength and labor sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who yes. knoweth? power of thine anger even according to thy fear so is thy wrath in verse number 12 so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom let us bow heads as we shall pray eternal God our father in the name of Jesus Lord we come now calling upon your holy and your righteous name I pray now kind father that you will speak through these lips of clay Allow me to speak as the oracles of God. Let me speak with accuracy and with clarity. Touch somebody's heart. Lift the hung down head. Remember this family, oh God, not only today, but the incoming weeks, oh God, and months ahead when they should miss uh, Miss, Miss Mary, oh God. And Lord, let them know, amen, that you are with them. You said even when we walk through the valley, you will be there, God. We thank you and we praise you. We give you glory for it is in Jesus' name. We pray we thank God. And let every heart say amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, in this psalm, it is Moses, a man, who write uh, this particular psalm. He's at an age where he's able to reminisce, amen, and then to realize that God has a purpose in his life. Uh, he starts out with the prayer, amen, because he has sensible knowledge to know of the experience that he had that had it not been for the Lord on his side. Amen. That he would not be where he was at that time. And also he was willing to acknowledge the divine providence of God. My brothers and sisters, amen, I want to use for a subject, amen, from this text that we have read, Lord, teach us to number our days. Let, let me do a word analysis here. That word number is not senseless in the order that it comes, that it means that we are to count our days. What we need to do is use a synonym, amen, and replace that word. Lord, teach us to value our days. Amen. We got to learn how to value time because before all of us, how many of us? For all of us, time is running out. I know you look good, you smell good, amen, and life is fine for you, amen, but time has a way, amen, of, of, of letting us know, amen, that we are on our way out of here. Yeah. Just as sure as the baby is born, amen, the baby at some point in life is going to die. Yeah. Why is it, brothers and sisters, amen, we can talk about mostly any kind of subject there is, but we don't want to talk about death. Yeah. Whether, whether you are ready or not, The Lord is on his way back. All of us, when we were younger, used to play the game of hide and go seek. And if you had favor with the person that was counting, and you were late finding where you were going to hide it, they give you another chance. The IRS, and especially now in this pandemic, if you don't pay your taxes, they'll give you a second notice. The first one comes in black and white. The second one comes in red. And when you don't respond to the red one, they come in to respond to you. But when there's here's the call and hour to answer, are we going to be ready? It's here now from this text that Moses writes, amen, he's trying, as he reminisces and looks back from his experience in life, trying to help people to find hope in a hopeless world. We are living in a time, brothers and sisters, amen, that if I didn't have God in my life and on my side, it wouldn't take a whole lot for me to really seek the face of the Lord. We're on lockdown. 
Churches can't open. Kids can't go to school. Folk are laid off from their job. And to be real with you all, amen, it hurts us the most. We are the last hired and the first one fired. And even if we're first, they always put us last. Yeah. But I'm so glad that there is a God who sits high, looks low, and behold, the good as well as the evil. Yeah. Even the most dedicated follower of Christ, amen, is likely to experience some moments and some times of hopelessness. There are some people, amen, who will walk out of your life. But I stop by to tell you, amen, no matter what you've done, if you're willing to confess your sin and ask the Lord to forgive you, amen, Jesus, amen, will forgive you. Amen, he'll, he'll give you the ticket, amen, that we all desire. Why is it that every, amen, everybody want to go to heaven? Let me see my report. How many of y'all want to go to heaven? Raise your hand, raise your hand real quick. Amen. Everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Mortar got to put on in mortar, amen. Corruptible got to put on incorruptible. Yeah. We have to be given an ethereal body like Jesus himself. Yeah. Amen. You just, if you're at least 25 years old, amen, you just take a look in the mirror. Ooh. Time is filled with swift transition. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is on his way back. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, it is here that we must understand that everything happened for a good purpose. I know this is a pandemic, amen, and situations are difficult, amen, but we must turn to the Lord. Jesus said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. The idea of finding hope in despair, amen, may sound contradictory, amen, because people have looked everywhere. They've looked up, they've looked down, amen, but they have not looked unto the Lord. Jesus. Why? Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. My brothers and sisters, it is here the kind of hopelessness, amen, that we are experiencing are uh, the real challenge uh, to us in America. Not only in America, but all over the world. Let us remember, amen, that Rome was not destroyed from the outside. It was destroyed from the inside. And the Bible said that a nation that forgets God is destined for destruction. Well, I wish I could get some help up in here. Look at our nation. Look at our leaders, amen, how they are dividing people. Seem like they, they would have at least the courage for their children and grandchildren to want people to come together and live in peace. But our cry, amen, amen, for me personally is, Lord, teach me to value or to number my days. Not only that, God wants us, amen, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. I, I know we got a raggedy president, but we still got to pray for him. Simply put, amen, that means, amen, you got to love your neighbor. He goes a step further and says, well, even we ought to love our enemies. And then sometimes in families we can't get along, amen, because of somebody have a different idea, amen, or their persuasion is not the same as ours. But I stop by to tell you, amen, for a few moments, amen, that the Lord is coming back for a church without spot or without wrinkle. He's not coming back for a physical building, amen, but he's coming back for a body, amen, that's going to be fashioned after his own. The Apostle Paul, amen, said to be absent, Miss Mary, from the body is to be present with the Lord. For I reckon the suffering of this present world is not, com is not to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. Look at our society. It was the disciples who asked Jesus, so master tell us when you're going to come. And folk are playing with their lives, amen, like Russian roulette with a gun to your head, amen, they'll sin one day and want the Lord the next day. But Jesus want to come into our lives to stay. The Bible says, him that knew no sin took upon him the sins of the world. Amen. They crucified him. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He died for a wretch like me. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, I was not raised and brought up in the church. Amen. I was on the other side. But one day I heard the voice of the Lord Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden. And I'll 
give you rest. I'm glad that the Lord gave me a listening ear, amen, and a hearing heart. The Bible says, harden not your heart as many did in the day of judgment. A lot of us are going to wait until it's too late to accept the Lord in your life. We're going to do like the song that Tom Jones and Frank Sinatra song sings, amen, I did it my way. Only to find out, amen, that as you gather in life, amen, and the uh, vicissitudes of life begin to come upon you and you vacillate up and down between this and that when friends walk out of your life and you don't have no help. We're going to need the Lord on our side. When the, when the disciples asked Jesus this question, when are you coming back? You ever heard, you ever had somebody, amen, uh, to tell you that they were going to come back or they were going to come and pick you up at a certain time and they didn't show up and didn't call? And they saw, they, they saw your call. When you called them on that smartphone, amen, your name came up, but they said, not today. <laughs> Jesus told them, amen, that you would hear of wars and rumor of wars. Famines and earthquake. Earthquake in Raleigh, amen, a week ago. Amen, they felt, amen, stuff falling off the shelves in the grocery store. My brother-in-law called, amen, said he was in his house and he felt the tremor. God is trying to tell us something. It says false teachers, amen, and open persecution. All the signs, amen, of the time here now are being fulfilled. It's not very long, amen, before the Lord shall come again. But Moses, in this text, he said, Lord, help me to value my days. Ah, uh, all of us have made some mistakes. We have done some things that are wrong, but you don't have to lie in your sin. Brothers and sisters, sin is like quicksand. The more you wiggle, the deeper you sink. Yeah, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. Not only is the grass greener, but the dog is meaner. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you're willing to pay. And by the time you get back and realize that you should have numbered your days, you should have valued your days, it might be too late. It is here from this text. Moses allow us to know, amen, that two things are certain in life. That you're going to die and you're going to pay taxes. Isn't it strange how you can have the oldest car in the neighborhood? It don't even run anymore, amen. You've taken the tag off it, but they still want you to pay taxes on it. Can we get a witness up in here? And no matter who wins the election, it may well be a question, amen, of how much taxes... But you can be sure, amen, we are still going to pay taxes one way or the other, and certainly you're going to die. Can I get a witness up in here? It was the Apostle Paul who said that though this old earth, earthly tabernacle of this house is beginning to dissolve, I've got another building. God, I read. And I, I just need to know, amen, because if you are not numbering your days, perhaps you are not building on the right foundation. Remember the story of the three little pigs, how they went to build houses, amen, and one built a house out of straw, amen, and one built a house out of sticks, the other one built a house out of bricks. And so when the big bad wolf came, amen, the first house, he began to huff and to puff and blew the house down, the second with the house that were made of sticks, but the house that were made out of bricks, he couldn't blow it in. As Christians, we, we experience a lot of difficulties in life. But I'm so glad to know that the Lord Jesus said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Sometimes you may have to cry and go through some valleys all by yourself, amen, but he's still there. Sometimes when your pillow is soaking wet, amen, and people who said they love you turn their back on you, amen, and all of a sudden you found that it wasn't so, the Lord Jesus is still there. There are times, amen, when you have to go through a valley, amen, all by yourself, even in the sand, and when you can't see no tracks, on your left hand behind you, amen, they are tracks because the Lord is right there to help you. It is here now, brothers and sisters, amen. It doesn't matter who wins the election and out of all the promises that they make, amen, we are still going to die. The Bible says that it's appointed once the man to die and after that, the judgment. 
I think it was Reverend Maria Ray uh, read the scripture how that we must stand before God, every one of us, from the pulpit to the door, and preachers better know it the most, amen, that we're going to stand before God and be judged. Now, if you don't believe me, read Revelation 20, amen, and from verse, 15, from verse 12 to verse number 15, and see where it says there are going to be some books, and then there was a book that was open. And if your name is not found in the Lamb book of life, you're going to be cast in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. Brimstone is like gunpowder, amen. The more heat you put to it, the more and the longer it burns. Y'all don't believe me here, amen, but we all better wake up and smell the coffee and begin to number our days. We've gotten by with a lot of stuff, amen, and a lot of sin, and we know that it was wrong. Huh? But the Bible said if you confess your faults, God is faithful and just to forgive you. Can we get a witness up in here? I'm getting ready to close now because I'm trying to convince somebody that you need Jesus in your life. The Lord has been good to me. 18 years ago, I had a heart attack. Amen. Six years ago today, I'm cancer free from prostate cancer. Amen. And I don't look like what I've been through. But the Lord has been good to me. The Bible says, wow, that we were yet in our sins. That in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You all been good people all your life, so that's talking about me. When I was taking a drink, would drink me some Hennessy, roll me a little left-handed cigarette, amen, that looked like a real cigarette, and smoke just as much as I want to. When I would snort a little bit of coke, get high, amen, and felt like I was doing something, God had mercy on me. Times, amen, when I went somewhere, I was in one place and found out that my car was in another place. And brothers, I didn't know how I got home. But I'm thanking God for his goodness because the Lord has been good to me. I could have died in my sins, amen, but God, because of his mercy. I told myself I would never come back to North Carolina to live because my father was a sharecropper and we went through hell and high waters but I've come to learn that when there's no water at all you can depend on God we are now watching our black young men being shot down in the streets and seem like there's no justice we are crying out amen God where are you but the Lord has promised that if we love God amen and teach our children how Raise the peace of our children because they are taught of the Lord. I'm not worried about me because I know who I am and who I am. Lord, help me to number my days. My God, my God, as I get ready to close here, let us realize that Moses wrote this text. And one of the greatest jobs and the most difficult jobs you can have is pastoring a church. Folk, amen, that skin and grin and laugh in your face will stab you in your back. I heard the temptation say that smiling faces tell lies. Don't let their hands shake and their pet on the back fool you. Take my advice I'm only trying to school you. Look at Moses who wouldn't stay in Pharaoh's house. He could have been, oh my God, at the top. Went to the best schools, amen. But oh Lord, on, huh? He killed uh, a man, a Hebrew a man, and when they found out, huh, Moses had to escape huh, and rush to the mountains. Huh? But God called him. Huh? He said, Moses, huh, take off the shoes because the ground huh, you're standing on are holy grounds. Huh? He has spent 40 years huh, running huh, and 40 years in Midian. Huh? But God says, I'm going to send you to Egypt. Huh? He said, Lord, but I can't speak. Huh? Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, huh, that when I'm weak, huh, the Lord God is strong. Here was Moses now leading the people of God. And God told him when they complain and murmur, folk ain't never satisfied. They ain't never happy. They don't have your job. But they don't want you to have it. They ain't married and don't want you to get married. Oh Lord. But I hear the spirit of the Lord. And I wish somebody would hear the spirit of God. That time is running out. Time is winding up. Look at Moses to show you how 
You can get to the end and still not make it. They were thirsty, but God had provided for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein towers on a thousand hills belong to my God. He said, Moses, don't worry about this people. Just go there and speak to the rock. Sometimes as preachers, we do all we can to help folk, to talk to folk, tell them what's right. And the Negroes still won't do. They still won't believe that they need to number their days. Time is short. We got to learn to obey God because obedience is better than sacrifice. Now look at Moses. He stands at the rock. Somebody made him mad. That's why we got to control I am anger. We got to have some tempers. There's a time to be still and know that God is working it out. He said, Moses, speak to the rock. And all you got to do, brothers and sisters, speak to your situation. Take your feelings out of it. Value your days. Look at Moses. Supposed to go to the promised land. And the Lord said, speak to the rock. But he didn't obey God. He hit the rock uh, two times, and the Lord said, uh, because you didn't obey, uh, you will get there, uh, and you look over. Uh, I stopped by uh, to tell somebody uh, that if you want to see Miss Dickie uh, again uh, in our Father's house, uh, you got to obey God. Uh, and when Moses uh, smoked the rock, uh, it represents Christ. Uh, for on Christ, uh, the solid rock, uh, I stand. Uh, all of the ground uh, is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. This is Moses. You've been in church for a long time. You are a deacon. You are a trustee. You are a financial clerk. Miss Mary didn't come to church every Sunday. But she never gave me a hard time. A good cook would help me any way she could. I'd rather have one of her than ten of a whole lot of folk who say they love me. Oh, Lord. But here was Moses standing at the promise, looking over what God has showed him. The goodness of the Lord, a land that flow with milk and honey. You can see the prize, but if you don't obey, you won't get there. Lord, teach us to number our days. And when you value your days, from this day, you can make the rest of your life the best of your life. Yes. Seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness yes. and all these things yes. shall be added to you. Yes. Moses wrote this song yes. but in the end after being an older person, a senior person who we ought to know the, men, the, know the best and be on our best behavior. Yes. Isn't this something how we allow the enemy to come in? Come Brothers and sisters, Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. You need to ask God, Lord, help me to value my days one day at a time. You'll never get yesterday back. Tomorrow has not come. But God will give you faith for today and hope for tomorrow. Lord, teach us to value our days back in the hand of the moon. Come on, somebody give the Lord.
I had the pleasure to meet her when her daughter, I call her Cece, made a transition several years ago. And we've had that relationship ever since. Through her passing of her husband, her brother, her sister. She would always call me most any time. How you doing? I just want to let you know I love you. That's all she called and check. Invite me over for dinner because she cooked. She really could cook. And she prepared a spread. I, was, I felt a little jealous the other night when the beautician came and did her hair. And the beautician shared the same fact that she was brought over. I thought I was in the special. <laughs> but she was brought over. But to God be the glory. Um, the life that she lived. And she touched a lot of people's lives. Amen. And most of all, I can remember in Maya Angelou is how she made you feel. Mm -hmm. She made you feel special. In spite of it all, God is still in control. Yes, we have a plaque, once it's engraved, and he said, this will be presented to you in loving memory of this is Mary Christ. We thank the friends that are taking time to be with this family today. We thank those for wearing the mask because this pandemic is no joke. It's no joke. We've funeralized several family and some friends from the pandemic. So please be careful. At this time, we prepare for our recessional and the committal services will be in the Woodlawn Cemetery. And again, we thank you for being with this family today. And we ask that our flower ladies may come forward now to receive the flowers. And we have a little session as we can get inside.